Hi, welcome to NDE TV. I'm Peggy Robinson. Today's guest is Brenda Taylor, and she is going to tell us about a spiritual experience you say you had in 1994 in Bosnia? Well, it started in 94. Okay. And here. Okay. Okay, so um, actually when I was a child, I, I always was very spiritual. But, um, and my sister always told me, you know, that I saw, was set, would tell her and say, look at the angels, you know. <laughs> but I, I was young then. But as I got older, um, I got more intuitive, you know, within myself, you know, with God and everything because of my grandmother. And, you know, why? I did. Why? Because of your grandmother? She was a very religious person. Okay. And very spiritual. But anyway, um, when I went, you know, I would tell people, you know, like I'm going to Sacramento or, you know, these things, they'd look at me like I was crazy. And, and I did it, you know, and it was, and it's because I had this spiritual gift that I knew that I would do it. Are you talking about like astral projection or, or um, out of body experience? Or are you talking about actually going there? Going there. Okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, when I went to Sacramento, um, I read a book called Medjugorje, the message by Wayne Webel. And he was the first American in that uh, to go there and ex meet the visionaries in Bosnia, Herzegovina. And it is a very, Mary had been appearing there for a number of years. Just a minute. Had been appearing there for a number of years. And um, I wanted to go there. And when I moved to Sacramento, I had a priest come up to me because I was going to the Catholic church at that period of time. And I went there. And I saw all the spiritual things that has ha ha go that Wayne Webel had said, like the big cross spinning around and around, and and you could see the sun spinning around and around, and there was just a lot of other people getting healed and stuff like that. A and cross that spins around and a sun that spins around. Yeah, if you read his book. And I, I talk about it in my book, too. And it does. It just spins around and around and around. And I mean, you're not seeing things. And the sun oscillates around and around and around. And the six visionaries that um, saw Mary, she told them, you know, each a secret, like the Garbando children and uh, Janita and um, Lucy Abora and in um, Our Lady Fatima. But anyway, I came home and then I started seeing things. And I had an experience in 1995. I had, I could see weather, you know, like um, things on my wall when I'd be praying, there'd be like beautiful roses and and all of a sudden there was um, fire, you know, fire on, the, on going on. And I figured, you know, Jesus was trying to tell me something. And what do you mean when you say fire going on? I mean, fire, you know, it was in my room, you know, but I was seeing it. And um, anyway, um, I, um, I just took it as that he was trying to tell me something. So anyway, um, I had another experience where I saw Jesus on the cross and he just, you know, the room, it was about one o'clock in the morning and he never said anything to me. But anyway, I had these Roman in, you know, the Roman people that were in his times where they were on horses and they were dressed up. I could see that. 
and just really far out stuff because I wasn't on anything. I mean, but I was seeing this. And, um, but then um, I ended up uh, seeing a, um, uh, the, the, an earth and a crown of stars around it. So I knew it was Mary. And I had been going to, when I lived in Eureka, I always went and prayed to her thinking it was Mary. You know, are you think, Catholic? Not now, but okay. I always prayed to her because she just meant a lot to me. And um, so anyway, um, and then they had a like St. Joseph with, with the baby. And so anyway, to get back to my story is, is that back in 1996 and 97, I saw these like a camera clicking, you know, with different pictures. And it was like, you could see whether people running and you could see the mud slides and the, the river flowing over and just terrible weather. And back in 1996 in Oregon, there was a mudslide, a flood, which they called the Chocolate River. And it came to Sacramento and it totally wiped out a lot of people's lives there was mudslides and there was uh, houses going down the hills and stuff like that so I knew it was a premonition and um and I know it was from God and so anyway um I went back the next time I went back I prayed to God and I asked him you know I said I really want to meet Wayne Webble. And the la the next time I went, he was there. And I got to meet him. And at that point in time, I was writing my book, you know, starting it because I was taking notes of all the things that were happening in my life. And <clears throat> then I got like all these, you know, for some reason, um, I would have something come out of my mouth, you know, like somebody talking for me. And Wayne knew that, you know, it was a spiritual um, enlightenment because he, he basically saw a lot of that when he was up there. And um, anyway, we got to talk and, and reminisce and stuff like that. And I went back to Bosnia and I did have Visca. I got to meet Visca the first time. She's one of the, the uh, visionaries and she prayed over me. And then Mariana is the other one. And then I got to see Jaco who told us that Mary said that there would be peace, you know, that we got to pray for peace because the, you know, the wars. And so anyway, um, I um, knew when I started writing this book, I knew that what he meant was that there was going to be more wars, you know, and there was, that's when Soloboda Milosevic, you know, got real nasty in Sarajevo and stuff, but I saw the war. I saw all the bombs and stuff like that, but it was quite an experience. And I just felt like, you know, Mary, Mary or God was intervening and telling me these things. So then I got to go to Bosnia again. I, you know, I wanted to go back and see all the shrines and I did get to do that. And then um, came the, uh, then came in 1999, I was writing my book and I developed to see auras. I can see auras around people. And so I was looking at the sightseers. Do you remember Carol Sung and the, well, Carol Sung was um, a woman that went to school with me. Two, she was two years ahead of me. And she had her daughter and a, and a uh, 
they were the sightseers and an exchange student. And it was Terry Stainer that, you know, killed him. And I knew that they, they were trying to find him. And I knew when I looked in the aura and, and could see that, um, that two of them were dead and the other one was still alive. And that would be her daughter. And I could see these visions of where the car was and because I could see red paint on the side of it. And in March of 1999, this guy was walking in Tahoe and they found the car and they ended up, um, he ended up calling the police and there they were. And there, there was that red paint that I saw, just a speck of paint because he burnt the car. And so my sister and, you know, I said, you know, Leslie, I just, you know, don't know what to make of this, but I know that the other girl will be dead and that will be her daughter. And so I didn't want to report it because, you know, they're not going to believe me and I couldn't tell them exactly where she was, but thank God there was, there was a, um, a woman or a man walking his dog and he's found the car and they got the bodies and then they found her daughter about a mile ahead because he killed her too and now he's in prison but what's really weird Peggy is that when I decided to come home in 2001 I went to Humboldt State University to receive my political science degree and there was her brother, Chris Carrington. And I, I mean, I just thought that was weird. I mean, and I, would, I told this um, woman, I, I was talking and I told her and she said, Brenda, that is weird, you know, to, you know, meet up with her brother. And, but we got to be good friends and he went into politics and I did, and I went on and got my master's in business administrations. But that's what happens um, with a visionary. And Edgar Casey, if you've ever read any of his books, he pretty much has the same gift as I, because I can see the auras around people. And I, when I'm in the dark, I just see the glowing aura around my body and it's really, it's just really weird. And I developed that after I came home from Bosnia. And <clears throat> I don't have any reason to lie about it because it happens to other people. Edgar Casey had it as well as Gordon Michael Scallions. And <clears throat> so it's a gift that I live with. And I did have another incident of weather patterns of um i was in 2002 i went up to to pay tribute to my grandmother she passed away the one that was religious and i was sick and all of a sudden something woke me up and it was just this white white thing in you know like a white light and all of a sudden it was like a pictures pictures clicking like your life was going but it was about what was going to happen and I saw different things happening again that were going to happen in the future and it pretty much has happened because our weather patterns have been very erratic and we have had a lot of fires here in your you know in Mendocino and Trinity and my brother was just about a victim of getting his house burnt down and then there was the Paradise Fire. So all that relates to seeing these visions of, of what's happening to our, our world. And I believe it because um, the Garl Bando children had the last secret of what would happen. And this nun that 
uh, was in Garabandal, and this was in 1997. I was going to Bosnia then, and I was watching it on TV, and she said, you know, she said, if people could only not sin, we would not have this dry weather because that's exactly what's going to happen in the future. We're going to have droughts and fires. And she said, <clears throat> that's <clears throat> why the Garl Bando children, you know, were very adamant to, you know, they told, I think, Pope John Paul, but they told several other, uh, other uh, confidential people about the secret. So that's why I wrote my book, because I do very much believe that I believe that you can have near death experiences. I do, I really do. But I also believe that people have a gift to see what's happening in the future because I do believe it's divine. What's the name of your book? Um, the, the name of my book is called The Woman Who Wears the 12 Stars That Surround Her Head. And it's by Brenda S. Taylor. And I, I wanted to clarify <clears throat> that when I moved back in 2001, I came back from Sacramento. I went back to the hospital and I went to pray to Mary and she wasn't there. And so I went to the priest and I said, where is the statue of the Virgin Mary? because you know I've been praying to her ever since I was a child. And he said, and he got a stond. So then the nun came out and she said, there has never been a Virgin Mary here at St. Joe. She said, I've been here way back in the, late, you know, the early 60s to late on, in the future. And she says, there's never been a Virgin Mary. So that summed my, my picture that I really, I was praying to an apparition because I clarified it with the, you know, priest and the nun at St. Joe Hospital. And, um, but I knew that Mary was always with me and Jesus, I, you know, because I don't go to the Catholic church anymore because of circumstances. And, but I do, I'm still very religious about my faith. And I, I pray to Jesus, but I also love his mother, you know, cause she is beautiful. And I know I was happy to meet the visionaries, all of them and their testimonies about what's going on over in Bosnia, which I saw go from rag to riches because many tourists go there and they always come back either healed. And if not, they see spiritual things happening. And um, I can tell you that I was watching a show one time and this man came, <clears throat> he said, I never really believed in God, but he said, I decided to connect with Visca, the visionary, and go over there. He had stage four cancer. He went over there and she prayed over him. And when he came back, he didn't have no cancer. He was healed. So Wayne Webble is a very good author and he wrote a very good book called Medjugorje the message and I really enjoyed being able to meet him and meet all the visionaries and the, and get to know them they're just like family to me so I haven't been back there for a long time because of all the you know I'm kind of scared to tra travel abroad because of the you know bombs and stuff you know on the plane <laughs> but I didn't travel domestic but um, I'm a believer and I know um, that people, when people can die, they can go to heaven. I believe very much in that, but I also believe that you get special gifts when you come back. And I do have a gift. 
Do you think, do you wonder how you got it? Well, I believe that um, I prayed to God about Medjugorje because I wanted to go. And I think when I came back from the first time in 1994 that I did receive this gift. But um, my great grandmother, she, she was a very psychic person and she wasn't, she, she married my grandfather and my grandfather was actually born in 1800 something. And that back then they, they thought he was a, a murderer, you know, he did something, but he, you know, he didn't. So he changed his name and he ran, you know, just got out of that place wherever he was living. And when he met my, when his ma wife, she knew, she said, your name is not that name. It's, it's Theodore Fish because she had the abilities to pick up a table. She had the ability to bend a spoon and she was a very psychic. And, and that is the truth because my, um, my grandfather's, wait, he would never lie about it. He died in 90, at 90, but he also was a, um, he also did the, uh, what is that, bootlegging? Yeah. yeah. He was a bootlegger, and he ended up, my grandfather, my mother's mother, my mother's mother and grand, my grandfather, all were involved, you know, <laughs> all <laughs> around during pro prohibition years, and um then he became a millionaire because him and my um, my grandpa's brother got a a uh, logging outfit up in uh, Washington and they made millions of dollars and then they came back to Eureka to settle down and my mother was like probably seven or eight or somewhere or that but she looked older and she was working as a waitress <laughs> in one of my uncle's um, restaurants up there in Washington. But we have a history of, of this. So, and then there was my aunt who uh, was paralyzed from the waist down and she got, she married this uh, really bad person. And <clears throat> she told me, she said she went to a medium and she said that she would die first. And I said, no, Cynthia, you're not gonna die first. Larry will die first and he's got two years and I said and there's nothing they're going to be able to do to it and back in April of 2012 he got hit he got cancer and he died so I mean it it's uh, and she had a really tragic life she was very brilliant and she she started a business and but he left her he left her with a, a debt that was terrible. And I, I just, I forgive him, but I, I, I think, you know, I, I hope to God he's getting his from God, you know, because he needs to be reprimanded for what he did to her. <laughs> but um, she was very smart. And then she, she died in 2017. And my dad died in 2017 and I took care of my dad, but I saw my dad and he came to me and he was not old. He was young. He was like in his thirties and my grandma fish and my grandma Moten came back and I've seen them. And I've also seen um, my aunt and she comes around whenever, but she knows I'm writing a book about her. So <laughs> anyway, that's, that is my experience. And, and that is, you know, I do have that intuition. And I know that my sister, she had an out of body experience, she didn't die. But my cousin died. And she said that she went to a place where we used to go swimming and she said, and she said that 
Robert came up to her and he said, Leslie, he said, God has me doing something else now. And you got to quit crying about me because I'm okay. And so I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that is. So, and I know you've had out of body experiences and stuff like that. And I thought it was very interesting. Yeah. But anyway, you know, Sylvia Brown and um, Tyler Henry, I don't know if you know them, but I've heard they, of Sylvia Brown. They're mediums. <clears throat> and I, I, I'm not a medium, but I just have spirit, you know, these spiritual experiences. I don't go around doing that kind of stuff with people. Yeah, that's what I say about mine. I don't make anything happen. I just, I just no. get awareness or things just happen that's, out of nowhere. That's what happens with me. And, you know, if I was to tell somebody this, they'd think I was crazy. And <clears throat> I have no reason to lie about it. It's the truth, honest to God truth. So, and that's why I wanted to share it because I think people need to realize that there is a God and he gives us gifts and we need to use it. Yeah. And I don't think people really uh, appreciate a lot of people. Stop, anyway, don't appreciate the power of prayer, how much can be changed from prayer. Well, yeah. And that's what this woman was saying the the nun. She, she did say if people would, if the whole world would quit sinning, and pray to God, our God, and his government, then we would have peace. And this is what Mary's trying to say to the visionaries is that we need to pray for peace because it's coming, you know? And- <clears throat> What's coming, peace or something bad? Well, no, peace and God's government, you know, we live in his government instead of the worldly oh, okay. and and that's basically what she's been telling them well it seems just to me off topic politics i mean you've you got a master's degree in political science right but it, just my little my i have a master's degree in business administration business administration yeah, is and it just feels to me like in simple terms like evil's in charge it is it is. And it, and it makes me angry because it's, it's, it's evil versus good. And it, and it just will never stop. It's the devil that's ruling this country and there's no way you can get it, get it. And it seems like the good people are just being good and quiet waiting for it to end. And it just gets worse and worse. It's not going to end. It's not going to end if people don't start standing up because mm -hmm. our country is going down the tubes and, and we need to do something. And I do get on YouTube a lot and look, I've signed, I don't know how many petitions to get rid of what is in our government and how fraudulent they are, because it's terrible what they're doing to the taxpayers. And I think they like being terrible. They like irritating us. I think they hated us so bad because Trump was elected that they can't stop the revenge for the time Trump was in office. I, I feel that's what it's been all about. Is it still, they're still operating on revenge. They want communism and to control us. Yeah. Anything that might upset us. Yes. You know, like now they want, you know, the babies is just not abortion. It is after a, up to one month old live baby, perfectly healthy. I don't and, believe and no consequences whatsoever and any manner they want. And anybody that tries to interfere will be prosecutor or sued. I take that back will be sued. And, I, and so I said like, so someone could go into a nursery, walk into a hospital and complete mayhem. You make Sandy Hill look like a fairy tale, right? and um nothing sandy hook i'm sorry yeah and um but and and no police no nurse nobody would be able to interfere with that mayhem be under that law because they would be sued if they try to interfere with what 
But if Nancy Pelosi and Biden's Biden's uh, uh, son can do what they've done, that's okay. But it's it's not going to happen because special counsel John Durham has has them neck and neck, and I hope he gets every one of them. I mean, there should be some law against someone even proposing that. Yeah, trying to make that a bill, they should be sent to an electric chair just for proposing using our government to propose such a thing to kill United States citizens. Yeah, it is. And that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, because they think that they're going to have this world. You know, Bill Gates is buying all the all the farming land and the Chinese, you know, and and these people that are in power are letting them do it. And they've got a plan. It's not right. And there's only one reason they were buying farming land to starve us. Yeah, because they know that things will continue to go off the shelves and not come back on the shelves. And Carmela Harris knew that. She yeah. knew that when she got in office because she was on the video and she told her people that she was talking to, she says, if you want to get anything, you better you better get it now because all the the cargo is going to be out on the, you, you know, the shelves are going to be empty. So they knew. They knew that this was going to happen. It was all planned. Yeah. And I've read stuff where they planned this stuff with the mayors years before the yeah. COVID. Because, you know, when COVID started, I thought, how come all these mayors are running the country now? And then I got read and find out that they started, the, I forget what it's called now, where they all got together and decided, okay, when this happens, all us mayors are going to stick together and this is what we're going to do. Well, you know, Peggy, they're in an elite group, very high elite, you know, the Illuminati. <laughs> and and that's what's running our country. And they have to do what they tell them to do, I guess. But I don't agree with abortion. And I don't agree with what Fauci did. He lied to the American people and killed innocent people. And they all should be handcuffed. And, and he should be in prison for ha- that one university where he has this study where they take um, aborted babies' hair, their scalp, and put it on rats. I mean, they got pictures of this. Well, I read a I read a read a book about a girl that had a near death experience, and she. She went to, um, she was hearing God and he said, don't do that. You'll get pregnant. And she thought it was her mother, but she heard God's voice and she ended up um, going and getting an abortion. And the doctor, he just totally ripped her, you know, and, and then she felt guilty after that of having, you know, her baby because it was in the trimester you know almost born you know and so anyway um she ended up having another baby and now she's talking about jesus she she i i i could send you the um the the name of the book but it was a really really good book i think every abortion should be televised I do too. I don't believe in abortion. And you know, I, you, you want to, you want to have it. You're not you, but you know, people want to advocate it. Well then let's watch what you're advocating for, what you're voting for, what you're hating Republicans for because they're pro-life. Well then let's watch. If you're not ashamed of it, you're so proud that you can turn buildings pink. Well then let's, let's watch what you're actually for and let them watch these babies coming out without their limbs or coming out whole and bawling and laying there dying in a heap in a trash can. Let the, everybody see that they are in pain, for heaven's sakes. What common sense does a person have to have to know that they're going to be in horrible pain? If they lie to people and say, oh, it's a clump of cells. Oh, they don't feel pain. And then they use NDEs to promote abortion. Not here. 
Well, you know, I, I live in a very democratic area and I, I see a lot of people, you know, a lot of the Catholics, you know, go out and they pray the rosary and do, you know, or against abortion and some other churches are too. But, um, you know, I just, people don't listen. Mm -hmm. and I don't know where their minds are. It's crazy. And they say, we can do what we want with our bodies, but why not? Why not? Uh, what I want to advocate is why not be a lady and gentleman and get married and, and, you know, be financially able to take care of a child. And I mean, is it that hard to get on birth control? No, it isn't. You know, no, it you isn't. can't afford a condom. You shouldn't be having sex. No, and that's how I feel too. I mean, I'm very conservative and <clears throat> I don't believe that you should even have an abortion, but you just can't, these people are, I think they're in an occult is what they're in and they're, they, they've been brainwashed. I was watching a video of Indy Ear the other day. He says passed away, but he was saying, as in your death experience or some trying to be an expert, he was saying that, and I've heard a lot from others too. Oh, the soul doesn't come in until the woman's five or six months pregnant. I'm like, you're such a liar. Scientists don't even admit we have a soul. So how are you able to pinpoint when the soul comes in? Because, you know, there's that spark of light they show when they're in the moment of conception. That's life, a spark of light. And everybody knows that you and I both would not be here if our mothers had an abortion, you know? Yeah. And so, because there's a, pro I don't care if you're one month or nine months, there's a process that we get, we all gear. And I just feel it's so selfish for a live person to sit and say someone else should not be born just because their mother doesn't want them and beyond my imagination that they you know can't deliver a full-term baby and then give it to adoption that they have a right to kill it yeah i don't lie i don't it, do you know what i mean like get, why can't you, even that month that they're talking about that one month okay what? if you don't want that baby put it up for adoption for heaven's sakes yeah. what kind of law would make it legal to terminate a life that, you know, of course, I'm against at any any state. Of course, I, I do. I had ectopic pregnancy. If they didn't remove the baby out of my tube, we were both dying. That, you know, I was only two months pregnant, you know, and it killed the other one, too, because the surgery. And so, you know, there is, you know, we have to save the life of the mother because why let them both die? Yeah. And so but then people give all these excuses like, well, Ray. Well, not every woman chooses to kill her child because she was raped because that's her child too. And what are you saying about these children that were born out of rape that they shouldn't have been born? That's not nobody's decision. I mean, I could go on day. It's a real trigger thing for me. Well, but, I, I agree with you because, you know, God, I don't, a woman can't help being raped, but on the other hand, she could give it up for adoption, you know? and let it have a good home but mm -hmm. it's it's just the way you know the free sex and the free everything i don't go for i'm, I'm very different and a lot of people don't un realize and don't understand how the near-death experience community uses um, near-death experiences to promote abortion I didn't realize all these new agers was you know, this liberal and well, I didn't understand that when I got into this. I just thought it's all about God and Jesus. We had near death experience. I assumed everybody was Christian. How could you not be after having an NDE? That's my thinking. And then I found out, oh no, uh -uh. you know, and that's why they're pushing reincarnation and that there's no hell and there's no judgment. Um, we're all one. We get a free pass, all this stuff. So you won't respect life. And, and all this focus on death and how wonderful death is. Well, just because this person went to heaven, that doesn't mean you're going to heaven. <laughs> you know? Oh, you're right. Because I've watched a lot of uh, near death experiences on your show. I watch it all the time. And that Julie has 
a, a, a bot podcast and then Randy Kay had one. But in one, one book that I have, this one guy said when he had a near death experience then and he went to Jesus that he said there was a house and I've heard this on your show. Many of your people have said that there's a house for the um, you know, for the people that children that are aborted and they are, they grow up just as fast as the others and they will see their mother again. I mean, they have to see, you know, Jesus will point, point that out at them. And my grandmother had 12 abortions and she said, because it was during that time that um, she couldn't you know, I don't know, take care of the baby or whatever. But anyway, 12, 12. And I and when she died, when she died, she's going to see all 12 of her kids and Cynthia, too. And Cynthia will see hers because my aunt was raped and it was back in the 60s and they didn't have abortions here at all. And they had to take her down south. Well, Cynthia will see her baby, you know. I don't know. I think God adopts them. He does. I re I read that in one near death experience in a book, and I've heard many people say that that He does take care of them. So, but I still think it's awful. Oh, you know, of course. I mean, in any murder, you know, if if we saw on TV someone had their while they're alive, their arm cut off, and then the other arm, and then their legs, and they're alive, we would be so outraged, you know, get this horrible person that did this to these people, and what if it's millions of people, but, you know, that's exactly what happens, you know, in abortion, and they have to put all their little parts back together, make sure they're all there, so they don't leave anything there, and I mean, and they won't even think about it, and they just, oh, they don't feel anything, it's not real, it's like, you're betting your life on that, aren't you? And that's looking away. They're all empaths too. All their empaths and they don't eat meat because those poor animals and you go kill your own children, you know? And, oh, I just like, but, but then, and, and, and then this now, you know, with this about one month old, what, what's next up to age kindergarten? I mean, why are we do, why are we attacking children like this? And the human trafficking and the children that's involved and I heard so much stuff. I'm sure everybody has, you know, what's really behind this stuff with COVID, you know, wearing the mask, hiding the children that's being trafficked. It's a lie. And it, it's the devil. I mean, God says in the Bible that it, it's going to be a war between the devil and, and, and the good. And all that's these children brought over here, these open borders. What's happened to these children? Nobody knows. Where are they what, going? What are they doing with them? I don't know. I think it's terrible. Nobody wants to talk about that. Well, Carmela Harris hasn't done anything. And neither has <laughs> but anyway, it's, <laughs> it will be in God's hands. Because, you know, he did say that he's going to have the upper hand and he will. Yeah, I feel like people are sitting back waiting for God to do something. And I feel like God's like, why don't you get off your butt and do something? Well, that's it. People aren't doing anything. But I think they're scared because of what kind of, of government we have now because of being censored. And I mean, being, um, I mean, one guy got in trouble for saying something. And I mean, it just, it's terrible. Yeah. And I keep saying, where's the investigative journalism? We don't have these investigative journalists anymore. Everybody's just, wow, wow, wow. I hate this. I hate them. And over here, wow, wow, wow. I hate this and I hate them. And nobody is investigating, getting to the bottom of anything and reporting their findings. Like, where, where's that at? It, they're not doing anything. They're just rabbling. Somebody told me, high up in the military, that... China already owns us. They do. But they're not telling anybody because they don't want people jumping off bridges. Yeah, I believe it. They, they're buying everything in California. Because and it's like we have no government now. And that's it's what, too quiet. 
that's what Biden and and uh, Hillary and, and Obama want. You know, they want communism. And I did never vote for any of those people. But um, I do know that they own a lot of our country. I mean, because they keep borrowing money from them. We'll see. We'll see. God can have the upper hand, Peggy. He'll win and he'll be with us. And the, uh, the uh, fear of Christians is crazy too. That well, they're trying to take religion away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to take everything, our rights away. And that's why Trump is trying to fight to get in. Hopefully we'll get the House and the Senate, uh, you know, this November. And I really do think we will. I see on my Facebook daily, somebody hates Christians and they're afraid of Christians. They hate religion. Those people are this and that. Like, oh my gosh. And like how they're able to get people to hate. Like they just get up every day and turn on the TV and find out who do we hate today? And I'm going to get on my Facebook and tell everybody why we should hate this person. And like, oh yeah, I hate him too. I hate him too. <laughs> I don't get involved in that. I, I, I do make comments about how I feel about the Clintons and, and, you know, uh, assessment and all that dirty work she did. And, and, <clears throat> but, you know, I really do feel that John Durham is going to basically, he, he's got him by the neck. Yeah. And like Musk, actually everybody hates this week. Is he bought Twitter? <laughs> Republican. It's, it's they're because worried. They're, they're scared that their uh, control just went down the tubes. I hope it did. Yeah, that's right. Control. I may be get. I may get banned from YouTube for what we say. I don't care. Ban away. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not cowering down to nobody. I'm not silencing myself for nobody. So. Me. So because we'll see. <laughs> God comes first. Yeah. 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 If there's anything I fear is offending God, I don't care about offending anybody else. Like he says, if you stand with me, you'll be protected. And, and I believe that. I see it all the time. Yeah. 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 So, all right. Well, thank you. Is there anything else we didn't get to cover? You wanted to? I got, I covered everything. More than we needed to, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you very much for letting me come on your show. Oh, you're and, welcome. And like Noby, I loved her and the, the rest of your guests. I hope I get to meet you in person someday. So, yeah. Yeah, me too. I would like to have a big conference where everybody has been on my show can meet and get up on the stage and have their turn and it'd be fun. Have a big That's party. Okay. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you. And you take care. God bless. You too. Bye-bye.